Hey guys, welcome back to Mechanical PE Exam Prep. If you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to get the basics down before solving lots of problems, take my Udemy course, HVAC and Refrigeration Fundamentals. In less than five hours, you'll review all the major topics you need for the PE exam. By the end, you'll actually be excited to start studying. Welcome back to 101 Solved Mechanical Engineering Problems. This is HVAC number five, and this problem is all about heat pumps. A building uses an electrical heat pump for winter heating. However, for part of the winter, the capacity of the heat pump is insufficient, and pure electrical heating must be used to make up the difference. No heating is required at 70 degrees or above. The temperatures in the table are accurate to within two and a half degrees. And we know the design heat loss is 3 times 10 to the 5th BTU per hour. The indoor design temperature is 70 degrees. The outdoor temperature on a design day is 0 degrees. There are internal heat sources of 7,500 BTUs per hour total. And the cost of electricity is 8 cents per kilowatt hour. And we've been given a table with different temperatures in 5 degree increments and the number of hours per year that the conditions outside are at that temperature. So you'll notice as it gets colder and colder, there's less and less hours spent at that temperature. And also you'll notice if you add up all these hours, it does not add up to the total number of hours in a year, 8760, because for a decent percentage of the year, it's 70 degrees or above and no heating is required. In fact, cooling may be required during some of those hours. And then we also know the heat pump capacity, which changes. It's a function of the temperature outside. Heat pumps are notoriously challenging to operate when the outside temperature is very low because it's difficult to transfer heat from outside to inside when it's very cold outside. And then it tells us the power to operate, which also decreases with the capacity. And there's two questions they want us to answer. The first is, what is the total annual cost for the pure electrical heating? So that's just the heat that we have to make up for the fact that the heat pump by itself comes up short. And they remind us that 1 MBH equals 1,000 BTUs per hour. And then what is the cost of running the heat pump? So let's start by thinking about the first part. If we're going to find the total cost for the pure electrical heat, we'll need to know the delta between how much is required at each of these temperatures and how much we're actually coming up short using the heat pump by itself. So as a starting point, let's note that the design heat loss, call that Q dot design, corresponds to the design delta T. And they're defining a design day as when it's zero degrees outside. So if you need the indoor conditions to be 70 degrees and it's zero out, then the design delta T is 70 degrees. That's the worst case scenario that the system needs to be able to keep up with. In general, we can say, that the heat loss equals the overall heat transfer coefficient times the area times the delta T. And that's true for all conditions, not only design conditions. So where we're going with this is we want to identify the heat loss per degree of delta T. So we'll divide by delta T on both sides and say the heat loss, and this could be the heat loss for any temperature, divided by the delta T is equal to the overall heat transfer coefficient times the area. And what's interesting about this is we can note that the overall heat transfer coefficient is a function of that building. It has some walls, some windows, and a roof, and it's made of particular materials. So that's roughly constant. And the area is also constant. The building isn't changing throughout the seasons. So this product is a constant. And so we can say that the heat loss, the heat that we have to replace with our heating system, is a direct function of the delta T. It's a function of the temperature outside, which isn't surprising. And we can set up a proportion between different heat losses and different delta Ts and set them all equal to each other because this product is always the same regardless of the outside conditions. So let's apply that by way of our first line in this chart. We can say Q dot zero, meaning the heat loss when the temperature is zero outside, so that's Q design, that's the same as this, divided by the delta T when the temperature is zero outside, which is 70 minus zero, and now we'll set that equal to any other ratio of heat loss divided by delta T. So let's choose the first line. So we'll use Q dot for 
t equals 65 outside, which we would like to know, divided by the corresponding delta t, which is 70 minus 65. And now we can solve for q dot 65. q dot 65 equals q dot 0, the design heat loss, 3 times 10 to the fifth. And I'm going to start writing that as 300,000 BTU per hour divided by the delta T, which is 70 degrees Fahrenheit, times this delta T, which is 5 degrees Fahrenheit. So degrees Fahrenheit cancels out. And we can see where this is going. It's 5 over 70, so it's 1 14th of the design heat load. And that makes perfect sense because the delta T for a design day is 70 if it's 0 degrees outside. But if it's 65 outside, it only has to overcome a delta T of 5. So it's 1 14th as much heat loss. That's that much less heat we have to replace in the building. Hopefully, even if this mathematical approach was a little bit of a leap of faith setting it up, that makes intuitive sense that it would be that much less. So what does this work out to? Q dot 65 is 21,430 BTUs per hour. Now some of that heat doesn't have to come from the heating system. Some of it's going to come from these internal heat sources. We have 7,500 BTUs per hour of internal heat sources. So we'll subtract that since we're getting that for free. That's heat that's going on inside regardless. And that difference then is 13,930. This was from the internal sources. And now we'll notice that the capacity of the heat pump at that outside temperature is 60,000 BTUs per hour, which is far greater than 13,930, right? So the heat that we need, 13,930, is much less than the capacity of the heat pump, 60,000 BTUs per hour. So what does that mean? It means we don't need to run the electric heat. The heat pump is adequate by itself. Okay, great. Let's do that for the next row as well and see if we need the electric heat. So we'll call this one Q.60. And I'm going to skip straight to here. And I'll skip over some of the units to speed things along. So it's still 300,000 over 70. But now our delta T will be 70 minus 60 instead. So that's only a delta T of 10 and that equals 42,860 BTUs per hour. Again, we get to subtract the internal load, and the result is 35,360, and the capacity is less than it was before. Now the capacity is only 55 MBH, but that's still more than we need. So 35,360 is less than 55,000, so the heat pump is still adequate. Now you can anticipate at some point this is gonna flip, because the amount of heat that we need is increasing as the outside temperature goes up and the capacity of the heat pump is decreasing. So at some point we're going to need that electric heat. Let's do the next one. Q dot 55, 300,000 over 70 times, now the delta T is 15. That gives us 64,280 minus the 7,500 is 56,786. And now the capacity is only 50,000 BTUs per hour. So we've now surpassed it. It has now flipped, so now the electric heat is required. How much electric heat? Well, it's going to be the delta. It's the difference between how much we need and how much we're getting from the capacity of the heat pump. So it's 56,786 minus the 50,000. So we have this delta of 6,786 BTU per hour that has to be made up with pure electric heat. And we want to know how much that costs. So let's turn that BTU per hour into kilowatts, since that's how we buy electricity. So we'll divide by 3412 BTU per hour per kW. And I'll just calculate that. That is 1.99 kW. And now to turn this into cost, we need to multiply by the number of hours and then the cost per kWh. So we're dealing with the T equals 55 condition. So that's happening for 450 hours a year. So we'll multiply by 450 hours and the average cost of electricity is 0 0.08 per kWh. And that equals about $72. So that is the cost associated with this row. So there's no cost associated with the first two rows because we don't need the electric heat. But there is cost associated with this row and every other row after. So that's a lot of computation that I don't want to drag you through. So I made a quick table to summarize these results and get us to an answer. And you wouldn't have the benefit of doing this on a test, obviously, but I would hope that 
it wouldn't give you something quite so tedious that you'd have to run through you know, the same calculation over and over again. But it's still a good exercise and it's definitely the right way to go about this analysis because you want to take into consideration the fact that these temperatures, even though you have to be able to design for conditions of when it's zero degrees outside, that's a very minuscule number of hours in the year that it'll be that bad. When it comes to the cost analysis, you need this kind of data. So we'll jump over to this table. So the first four columns here are the same as what's given in the problem. And now I've added this column E, which is for the total heat load. So that's the 300,000 design divided by 70. This is that proportion that we set up times the actual delta T for whichever one we're trying to figure out. So the next one we're going to do, for example, is going to be T equals 50. So it's going to be 70 minus 50, delta T is 20. And then this minus 7,500 is just to subtract those internal loads. So for each one of these cells in column E, we're calculating the total heat load, excluding the internal loads that we're getting for free. So it's just the total heat that has to actually be added by the heating system, either the heat pump or the electric heat. Then in column F, I'm subtracting out the capacity of the heat pump at that temperature. And that leaves us with the amount of energy that the electric heat has to add. So let's see what that looks like typically. I have a statement in here that if the total load is less than the capacity of the heat pump, then the electric heat is zero. And that's what we saw when we calculated those first two rows. But if not, if that condition is false, then that means we're short on capacity at the heat pump and we need to run the electric heat. How much electric heat? It's going to be the delta, E5 minus C5, so 78,000 is the total heat required minus, in this case, 45,000. So that's 33,000 that needs to be provided by electric heat. And then the cost is pretty straightforward. We're just taking how much electric heat we need, turning that into Kw, dividing by 3412, multiplying by the number of hours in the year that it's at that temperature, and then multiplying by the cost of electricity, 8 cents per kWh. And we get these values. Take the sum, $2,167 per year to run the electric heat. And that is our answer for part A.